Here we have the leap motion. It has one, two, three infrared lights, and what that does is it creates a virtual space in front of you, uh, so you can interact with your screen um, to turn it kind of effectively into a touch screen, or for artistic purposes, you know, so you can mould items or play with photos, much like you see in the Minority Report. I have it on this screen here just to show how the visualisation works while I mess about with it, and I'll show you how its interaction with Metro is, which is what sold it to me. Um, I'll talk about its pros and its cons and how I still feel it just needs a little bit of tweaking and it will be well, the product that I want it to be and hopefully that will really push it to to get those numbers. The item itself is £70 with a Maplin retailer and it is available online for roughly the same price. Uh, what I'll do is I'll show you now how the visualisation space works and how it recognises your hands and how it's got quite a good response time uh, depending of course on the power of your computer. Um, it's all the specifications on the box, so if you're not sure, just have a look at that and try and match that. Here you have your five uh, fingers. You can see the virtual space um, on the uh, right-hand desktop uh, screen, and you can see that it recognizes multiple um, finger usages. You'll notice how uh, on the other screen is the green dot, and that's just your that represents your touch. Like when you've touched it, it will go green. Um, uh, that's as simple as that, really. It recognises one digit, two digits, it's advertised as recognising, um, say, when you're using a device or a pen, but uh, at the moment um, I'm not sure you know, how effective that is. Um, you also can kind of control um, certain apps which will allow you to manipulate the, the way it works, which comes with the app store that it has, but I'll just show you that um, in a second. So. Uh, limitations I'd say at the moment um, with this is that it doesn't quite distinguish between touch and when you're not touching um, at times it can be quite painful to use um, once you've played it for a little while you kind of get better at it but ideally what they should have really thought about is maybe doing a definite touch zone uh, you said it where it is it goes you know set definite touch zone and you kind of create your own virtual screen and you move it in and what that does is means that when you've got the screen like this uh, you can move your fingers and when it comes forward you're definitely touching it and if you go beyond that you're still only touching it um, it just would create a bit more of a um, uh, an idea of uh, orientation if you like of where your screen is and that way I could have had it sitting here and I'd be able just to move my screen around in a way that I quite like. So what sold it to me was its operation with Metro um, because a lot of Windows 8 users will still use the desktop um, it's what we prefer um, but it would be nice to try and use this more. Of course you have all these ugly apps which apparently you can change in the 8.1 download but at the moment I'm mainly focusing on how this reacts with the um, the interface, uh, the 8.1 Metro kind of style interface. So use your finger to turn it. If you notice it's, it's very responsive and if you do it enough, hold on what have I, the hell have I done? Yeah as I say uh, there are ah, limitations to it at the moment. Alright, I've just learnt something new there, but never mind. Um, is that it, it, it is, as I said, very responsive. Uh, but when it comes to trying to move apps around, that can be quite irritating. Um, I've done it first time, as probably because I've used this so much now. Uh, because what Windows does is it, it tells you if you want to move the app or use the app. Uh, as such. But when you open an app, that can be quite difficult, which I'll probably do first time as well, but maybe it's just because I'm, I'm getting used to it. Uh, yeah, as such. I'm making this look a lot better than it probably really is, if I'm honest with you. Um, yeah, it's just very responsive. But like I said before, it, because you don't really know where the touch zone is, sometimes it can be frustrating that you could be touching it when you don't want to be touching it. Uh, the easiest way to, to notice that is you, um, if you move your finger forward, it touches. If you move your finger back, it stops. But the thing is, is you can push your hand further forward and just bring it back and it'll stop. So your hand kind of, you know, is, is just as of use when you need it. It's hard to explain, but you just have to use it to understand that. Um, Right, the downside on the keyboards, I still don't know how to get out of apps yet. Um, yeah, I've just opened something I shouldn't have done. I don't want to break my computer now. 
there we go turn off as you can see here this is what I mean like it's very hard to kind of just just touch something and it would be good if if you could distinguish between that um, with that kind of visual visualization that goes here I'll show you some of the apps that come with it um, I'm not going to touch it I'll just do my mouse save me a little bit of time you've got Coyote and that's kind of like um, a strange Feng Shui kind of app that feels like it's meant to make you relax and you manipulate objects that fly on the screen and it creates new music. You've got Lotus and the easiest way to explain that is an eye follows you around and you interact with it so I see it as like one of these fuddy duddy games like Coyote. You've got Boom Ball uh, that comes with it and that's like you catch the ball, bounce it off and it destroys the bricks. You've got the store where you can buy your um, Fruit Ninja and your Cut the Rope. Uh, and it, the cut the rope works very well on this, but on the Metro side of things, if you download the app that way, it really doesn't work very well at all. The orientation, so you can uh, learn about it. It just opens the screen that I've just got here. I didn't really want to do that. Um, that's how sensitive it is. You move your finger forward just to kind of point at something, and that's it. Oh, okay, hopefully it hasn't opened it. And your touchless windows, which is what I'm using, which is an app you download. You get it with Mac as well. Uh, other apps of interesting note is if you have a Mac, you can have you've got an app that you can create gestures, gestures too, uh, where you can, if you clap your hands, for example, you can um, go between your screens. Uh, if you did a certain combination, you can open up certain applications. Uh, so you know, there's a lot of potential for this, and the responsiveness is very impressive. It's very good. Um, it's just all it needs is just that definite touch zone, and if that was able on that, uh, able to have on there, it'd make say running certain applications a lot more smooth the transition would feel like a touch screen computer uh, just obviously you're about 5 10 15 inches away from the screen wherever you need to be um, the zone that it operates at is quite good too uh, it goes quite high uh, you can use it all the way down here uh, so it's there's so much potential for it it just feels like it's not quite there yet um, I will be using it for certain things but I know that if it's not improved I'll probably just stick to the mouse for nearly all my applications. Um, it's there's so much for it that I like though, and that's the the worry. It feels like it's so much there, but just just not enough, you know, there as well. Uh, I'm sorry if that sounds confusing, um, but you really have to use it to really find that out. But what I'm doing is I'm hopefully showing you its limitations at the moment and how it can really be improved uh, with some minor tweaks uh, that the user can do. Uh, I'm sure there'll be apps for that soon enough as well. You know what the app market's like. So, yeah, uh, I would recommend it uh, for you know for pictures or molding those kind of things for something quite nifty and quite cool. But at the moment, I wouldn't recommend it to replace it as a touch screen. Um, it's just not quite there yet, and it can be there, and hopefully it will be there quite soon. So I hope that's helped as a basic gist. If it hasn't, well, I apologise and I waste your time. But if it has, you know, if it put you off buying it because the reasons like me you used it for aren't quite there yet, then at least you're somewhat the wiser. But thank you very much for listening, and um, yeah, hope that helped.